to first thank uh, the session chair to accept my paper for this session. And uh, I have to apologize because I've got quite a lot to, co to cover, so I'm just going to read from my script so I don't I keep in time. Okay, so this paper is by uh, me and Tom, and uh, we're looking at the networks of metrics, uh, emerging social structure and communities in Gaoshu, Taiwan. <coughs> So since the turn of the century, the archaeological uh, research on social relations and community made a drastic uh, shift. This is mainly down to the adaptation of Bajul's practice theory and the focus on agency and human behavior. Um, archaeologists started investigating intimate agencies and gave rise to archaeological uh, archaeology of uh, communities. As opposed to a traditional social archaeology, the archaeology of communities focuses more on the intimate human interaction and position agency at the center of creating society. So instead of seeing community as a place where social interaction and production took place, the agent-oriented approach uh, views social institution as being socially constituted. This led to the division of traditional natural community, which is based on co-residence, and the imagined community, which is based on uh, intimate interactions. However, we are also quick to realize that uh, communities are also separated from, uh, are not separated from the history of place, even if they are not determined by residential relationships. Um, in his assessment on the uh, archaeology of communities, Oliver Harris concluded that he, the most uh, useful approach is to link both natural and imagined communities together, exploring face-to-face -face interactions and senses in which these communities are understood as dynamic, transformative, and emergent through practice. Communities emerges through the relations among humans, animals, places, and material things altogether. Harris later uh, pushed on with the concept of uh, assemblages, uh, a concept similar to uh, Latour's ANT or Harder's uh, entanglement. Uh, however, in our paper, we will uh, adapt Tim Ingold's wayfaring theory and the concept of social meshworks. So, in his book, Being Alive, uh, Ingold uh, proposes a new way of thinking towards social relationships. He argued that people perceive the world and form knowledge about, by uh, embodying themselves in the meshwork of reality. Um, so, it is locomotion, uh, locomotion rather than cognition that is the starting point for the study of perception and it is through the locomotion that everything surrounding us is woven into life. In a simpler phrase, uh, the meshwork is the path that we take, uh, we walk throughout the day, and the wayfaring is the experience that we perceive while walking along these paths. So let me just give a, a quick uh, uh, comparison between network and meshwork. So using Ingo's own ca uh, example here, uh, so we looking at uh, the relationship between the spider, the web, the twigs, and the uh, possible uh, prey for, for the spider. So from a network perspective, you have uh, these <coughs> nodes. So you have the spider, you have the web, you have the twig. These nodes are like the identities, uh, the places, or the resources. And then you have the edges, right? You have the edges, uh, the lines that connect the different nodes, uh, uh, the relationship between the nodes. And then you have the values that like uh, identify the type of the line, uh, the edge, or the weight of the edge, or what time it was occurred. So, um, <clears throat> whereas the network approach views the relationship between the spider, the web, and the twig as uh, three different entities, um, the meshwork approach considers them in their original layout, so on the top. Oh, I have this. On the top, okay. Um, the web is a product of the spider where it moves between the twigs and woven its threads to create a service of possible encounters to catch its prey. So the web is the path the, path the spider walked along and created a condition of encounter for it to interact with whatever insect got stuck with it. It is a possible interaction condition laid out as a surface texture, or in Ingo's term, a mesh, that defines the relationship between the spider and the prey. In other words, where the relationship in the network approach is defined by nodes and edges, the meshwork approach integrates the spatial dimension to create a fabric-like uh, interaction condition. So in order to Im implement this theory of social meshwork, uh, we utilize a, uh, utilize a site, in Gao, uh, site of Gaoshi in Taiwan as a case study for modeling. 
So Gaoshi, uh, uh, Taiwan, Taiwan, if you don't know, uh, Taiwan is on the southeast coast of China. South China is over here. We're on the southeast coast. Um, uh, the Kaoshi tribe is a branch of Paiwan ethnic group, one of many uh, indigenous uh, groups in Taiwan. Uh, the Paiwan is famous for their abandoned slate stone sediments, as well as their hundred pay snake totems and snake pots. The, <coughs> the abandoned sediments are usually located on a mid-mountain slope overlooking the valley. Uh, the sediment is constructed with piled up slate stones using dry stone warding technique. Um, our case study is the site Sakasinga, which is located over here. Um, according to oral history, it is the first sediment when the Gaussi people moved into this area and is believed to be around six to eight hundred years old. The site layout documents 104 house structures with an estimated resident, residence of 500 people. Um, the Paiwan people practices what Levi Strauss calls a uh, house society, in which social status, wealth, rights, and privileges are attached to the houses rather than to individual person. The house is the legal entity or the legal agent within the society. This makes the Paiwan settlements a very good, I don't want to use the perfect, use the word perfect, but a very good exam, a subject for modeling social masterworks since uh, social, status, uh, social status and identity are attached to the house rather than individuals. So in terms of uh, actually modeling uh, the uh, social matchworks, we take on week, uh, Wheatley's uh, proposal uh, for adapting uh, the concept of social proxemics. So social proxemics is uh, about uh, uh, people will interact differently in different ways based on the uh, distances between their uh, uh, opponents. So for me, standing here, I have the intimate space, personal space, social space, and the public space. So because people uh, interact differently based on different distances, we can apply this onto how people would move around in a, in a settlement. So what we have here is uh, the site of uh, Sakasinga, and what we did is we have a, a household over here, household over here, and then we use the least cost path to analyze where people would move along uh, with, within the, uh, the sediment. So uh, we used the Hikers, uh, Hikers equation for, for the least cost path modeling in, because of uh, analytical con consistency with the previous research in, on, in this site. So what we have here is a network perspective of the social relationship between this household and how this household, where you have two nodes and the, and the edge or a line. But uh, so by applying the social proxemics, what we have here is along this line, you have the close range with higher interaction possibility. And then the yellow one is uh, less possibility of interaction. This light blue one is still less and the blue one is, blue areas are basically no interactions. So this is what, what we call, uh, what, what we can uh, transform uh, a node and line kind of perspective into a fabric, a texture uh, uh, perspective of the social interactions. So what we did here is, this is the social interaction, social relationship between this household and this household. And what we can do is we can do it for this household and all the other households. So we come up with something like this. So again, uh, the black lines indicates the social relationship between one household and all the rest. So this is a network of this household with, the, uh, with, with all the rest of the settlement. And the background, co uh, color background indicates uh, uh, where higher social interactions will be located. So it's over here and the blue areas are like uh, less interaction. And again, what we have here is a one-to-many uh, relationship. Uh, we could do it for all the household and we come up with this, which is many-to-many -many relationships. And again, the black lines will indicate a network perspective of the social relationship in the site. And the background will be the uh, meshwork social relationship uh, of the site. However, the problem with the sediment social network uh, meshwork over here is that it actually inevitably compresses 104 social meshworks into one single representation of social phenomena. The structure and diversity 
that characterizes the complexity of social relationships are lost in a simple representation. It's just one raster. Therefore, we turn to network science for an alternative re representation of this one-to-many social meshworks by representing households <coughs> as nodes and connecting each pair of nodes with uh, a directional strength equal to the probability of their interaction according to the meshwork. So we actually uh, extract the values over here uh, to create uh, the, the, net, the value between uh, pairs of households. So that is just for one particular household for, uh, to all the other households. And, so, uh, and again, we can do it for all the households and we come up with, we will end up with a, a complete network, a complete weighted and directed net network that can be sub subsequ uh, subsequently explored in its entirety without throwing away any relationships by using a threshold edge strength value. That is, individual uh, social mesh words can be extracted to uh, establish a directional social relationships, uh, social relations, and provide the foundation for understanding relationship structure in emerging communities. So, what we have here is this is the complete uh, social network result. So, with this, we can ask and. Um, on this side is the original social meshwork of, of the whole sediment. So what we can do with this network, we can ask questions such as like, uh, which households are most central in the whole sediment plan? So we can use the degree weighted by the meshwork values, like uh, uh, because it is a, a complete network, this measure reflects the sum of meshwork values of each household's edge. And households with a high value will have strong probability of interaction with high number of other households. So we can, so from that, basically this is another representation of this, but from a network perspective. But because it's a network, we can dip deeper into their uh, relationship structure. So we can, because it's a directional view share, a directional uh, uh, relationship, we can actually dip dig deeper into and um, identify the in-degree and the out-degree relationship. So here we have the in-degree, we have the, uh, on the right we have the out-degree, which uh, the in-degree would suggest a higher probability of a one household being uh, uh, visited by other households. And the out-degree will indicate the, uh, a household uh, ha who has a higher probability of interacting with other households. So one is coming in, the other one is going out. So this is already information that we cannot get from the original uh, social meshwork because the social meshwork is only one representation of the sediment. Whereas this is, we can dig deeper into looking at what uh, the structure of these relationships. So from this, we can further ask questions such as uh, the, uh, what are the meshwork communities at this uh, site, Sakasinga? Uh, so it's defined as sets of households with a higher probability of interaction with each other than with other households. So in this example, we use a, a Lovain modularity measure to identify communities as sets of households with a higher matchwork value to members of the set than to other households. So with it, the results show that the sediment can be actually ident categorized into four different communities. So there's community zero, community one, community two, and community three. Like I said earlier, uh, the social mesh works, uh, the, the, the modeling of this is trying to incorporate the uh, spatial aspects into understanding social interactions. But that being said, this is actually a good example showcasing that although it, incur, uh, it in incorporates the, social a uh, the spatial aspect, it is not dominated by space. So the good uh, clear example is the household S1W3 S and S2W3, which is over here. In terms of distance and location, it is actually closer to community one and community two, but from our result, it, as it is actually identified and categorized into community zero. That is because like I said earlier, 
the whole meshwork is based on how people would move within the site and how they would interact based on uh, according to their move. <coughs> and this, there's only one path connecting this area of the sediment to the community zero area over here. So whenever uh, the people living in community zero would have uh, interact with all the rest, they only have one route going this way and it inevitably will go past S1, W3 and S2, W3. So that means they, these two households have, have a higher, a very high possibility of interactions with these two, uh, these, this community over here rather than the other two communities where it is closer to. So um, from this state, from the previous data, we can also ask further questions about what, what is the overall interaction probability with, uh, uh, between the communities. So are members of some pairs of community more likely to visit each other than other pairs of communities? So in here we use the, the mean mesh value of all links from community one to the other one and vice versa. So in this case, uh, what we see is because it's a directional relationship, we have uh, C1, uh, community one, it's a relationship with community zero, community, uh, community two, community three. So this C1 and community zero, uh, this value will be different to this because it's a directional relationship. And from here, we can see that C1 has a better relationship with all the others, and then comes C2, and then comes C3, and C0, uh, this community over here, has the lowest interaction probability with the others. Again, we can look at why it is, why C1, uh, located over here, has a higher uh, probability of interaction with the, all the others. That is because uh, this is the, the path density map of of the, the least cost pathways. That is because uh, most people, uh, when people are traveling from, from uh, the top to the bottom or to the bottom to the top, they, all, they, they would prefer based on least cost path. They would prefer choosing this route on, this, uh, the side, on the right hand side rather than taking the route in the middle. So this is again showing that it, the analysis is based on uh, what uh, the mesh works is based on the, 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 the roads, the pathways that the agents take and how that in interaction will influence uh, the later relationship that it is defined. So we try to look deeper into this, uh, understand this, uh, the, the number, the values of these uh, community relationships. And uh, we, uh, we asked, uh, uh, we started to think about why it is, why there's these communities and why the, commu the relationships show that C1 is higher than the others. So uh, previously, that's based, that interpretation is based on the modeling process, but we want to interpret it, this result and try to understand what it, what it has to do with the archaeology. So according to uh, uh, ethnographic studies actually documented that the headman's residence is the first house established in, in the region. So being the first settler in this landscape, it actually claims the ownership and the rights to all the land. Hence, it becomes the headman. Um, so from that, we, added, we know that the headman is living in this household over here, household 00. zero. So we know this, the, this settlement started from this point because it is the first settlement, first house being established. So we ask questions like, how would the settlement evolve if we assume new households would preferentially uh, be established in locations with higher probability of interaction with the headman? So what is the interaction probability of the headman with each, uh, each household? So the results are, sh are shown over here. C2 has a higher interaction probability with uh, the headman. Then came most of C1, then most of C3, and then most of C0. What we saw is the similarity that uh, C0 and C3 are the last two, uh, has the lower value uh, if we compare it to the inter-community interaction thing, uh, results. So as 
following a how, uh, following, because they, are, they practice house society. So uh, the, the first born child will remain in their house. And then the second born, the third born, and the rest will move out and establish their own house. So we, we, we sort of found, think that this might be an indicator or a suggestion of the potential uh, evolution of the settlement, whereas uh, maybe the first two generations were living in this area, and then the third, the fourth generation moved out, and then fifth uh, and the sixth. It, 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 it is a possibility of indicating uh, of the settlement uh, evolution, but this is just using Sagasenga as a case. Okay, I'll just uh, jump into conclusion. Okay, so in this paper we present a formal implementation of, implementation of so, uh, Timingo's concept of meshworks. So we develop a meshwork in GIS following the concept of social proxemics and subsequently represent the opportunity of interaction between all pairs of households as direct network data. This offers a powerful new uh, network representation of meshworks, which allows for the ident identification of communities in Gaussian sediment, the strength of interaction, uh, interaction between different communities, and the potential possible interpretation of the sediment ev ev evolution in this case. Thank you.